Well, thank you for joining us, man. I appreciate you, man. No, of course, man. Happy to be here. And yeah, it sounds like you were able to talk to a few of my people. And I'm, re- I'm really happy we were able to connect through just our networks. It's really cool. No, that, I think that's that's a fantastic thing. I think it's a lot of thing. Uh, something that people tend to not value, or not know how to value, is um is networking, and um and the power of what it brings to to people. <laughs> oh yeah, always have an open mind and and meeting new people, and you never know when that stuff's gonna come back around. You know, I met people two years ago. I don't have much use, and then sure enough, they got a they got a slot for me and. I haven't actually talked to my buddy Nate Giles, who was just on here, Philly, on your Philly podcast. And, yeah. You know, he came out and saw me in San Diego after we'd been in the Marines, saw our office, and really stoked on what we kind of have achieved. And it was just great for him to kind of plug me on the last last podcast, and here I am. Yeah, yeah, he's 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 a really cool dude. Um, he's amazing. Um, me and Philly actually stay in contact uh, pretty regularly now. <laughs> Um, which is oh, funny. Yeah. It's just an amazing thing, and um, I, I met him by chance on Instagram as well. So it was um, really, really cool how things just transpire, you know. And um, I want to introduce you to everyone. So everyone, you know, uh, this is Giant Nomad presents Original Green, and we have co-founder Andrew Beltran on here. Um, and Andrew, tell, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. So I'm co- after joined the Marine Corps. I had started Original Green Watch Company. At this point, we're really well known as being the premier makers of wooden steel watches. Uh, you know, we specialize in creating a unique product. Uh, this quality made is a premium product, as well as each piece has a unique story of where it comes from, the heritage of the wood, and kind of the story that that encompasses the watch. So that's what right. we kind of created our brand around. And you started this with your with your your brother, correct? Like you guys have been kind of entrepreneurs since uh, since little kids. Yeah, so it was it was crazy, kind of how the whole company got kicked off. Um, we, you know, we start, he, my, it's my older brother; he's two years older than I am. Uh, I after high school, I joined the Marine Corps, and then I was returning back from a deployment. Uh, at the time, he was in China, actually teaching English and beginning to source products such as just plastics, bottles, b- bags for companies, just kind of small sourcing, but but at the same time, kind of understanding the manufacturing process that, that goes down in China, uh, which ultimately is why he went to China. It wasn't to teach English, but that was kind of how he got his passport and his visa just to get going after college. Uh, right. he, didn't want, he didn't really want to climb that corporate ladder. He had a few job opportunities at Nike's and Adidas. Uh, we were coming out of Oregon, so Portland's kind of the hub for some of those brands. Sure. Uh, so at that point, he had started getting his hands dirty, and I was coming back from a deployment. He had told me he wanted to show me something when we met in Hong Kong, and that's when I initially saw the wood and steel watches. Um, it's not what it was is today, but it was like the initial concept of what it would be. And I remember that that initial moment I'd seen it. It was kind of outer body. I'd, I'd been away from home for so long, and it, it just reminded me of everything we had grown up doing, working as, as kids, the lessons our dad taught us. Uh, whether it being in nature and just growing up in the Pacific Northwest. And it was just something I didn't know where it was going to take us, but I just knew that I could get behind it and like a journey that it could create for my brother and I and just great memory. And that's kind of how it all started, just drinking beers and and just trying to get something going. (laughs) That sounds awesome. Like, so by chance was watches any, did you have have a passion for watches or just kind of just, just, just fell into your lap? My grandfather's watch was passed down to me, um, and it, you know that meant a lot to me. But I, I wasn't, you know, really into watches. I was primarily interested in in the wooden and the stories that we could tell, uh, you know, ultimately by reclaiming products. Um, and that's that's kind of how we made our name, but from reclaiming whiskey barrels and partnering uh, with Jim Beam. And recently, we partnered with the Golden State Warriors after they won a championship. We took the the basketball court, you know that legends have played on you know and, and we made a unique collection and sure enough we're able to we went from selling 200 hundred dollar watches you know to taking our brand to selling uh, one of those golden state watches was actually up to twelve thousand dollars and we've sold yankee watches at 1800 you know using old yankee stadium uh, after they tore it down so we're right. starting to become somewhat of a mer- memorabilia and uh you know the wood is fairly scarce so we able to charge a premium and tell a story did you know this was the direction you wanted to go or was this kind of hey let's try it out and see where it goes or did you guys actually have a strategic plan already set we had started to go in that direction uh with a licensing part licensing partnership that kind of fell on our lap with jim beam uh and that's when we, we were already reclaiming whiskey barrels and then 
they were they had reached out to us, hey, we'd love to make it for, as a corporate order, a couple hundred units. And we're like, well, we'd like to actually buy the license, which really at the end of the day is a royalty off every item you sell. Right. Uh, so so we, we, made, we absorbed the royalty and were able to license the Jim Beam product. And then the rest of the teams, we just started reaching out and uh, making connections. And yeah, it's just been a a crazy journey of getting all the licenses. So are these relationships hard to come by? Like when you first got your first relationship? For sure, yeah. How, it was really, how, it, yeah. How was that? Like what was the process was of that? Really difficult. You know, and we had mentioned when we first started the call, you know, network network really came into play uh, as we received our first MLB license. Uh, you know, we actually were – we had taken some investment. One of our investors – had a great relationship with a girl that did PR and other connections, and she was able to connect us directly through to M- the right contact to MLB. Uh, and then we were able to just get the license fairly easy, just going through the paperwork. Uh, after we got those initial con- the initial MLB license, uh, everything else has been fairly easy. It's kind of like we've been proven, we've been able, and we were able to hang our hat on the Yankees and the Chicago Cubs. And, and, you know, those are the, some of the biggest brands in the world. So right. I'm a Yankees fan. Other, yeah, so yeah. that's huge. <laughs> yeah, some of these other partnerships have been fairly easy to achieve after we got our foot in the door. Um, and, I mean, at the end of the day, we're, we're here standing at six years. You know, we've accomplished a lot. And, I, you know, we've kind of found, found the rhyme and reason of how we're going to grow this. And so, yeah, it's been – we've got a long way to go. So let's, let's, let's unpack this some more so people can understand. Like, you make quality watches, but you make them out of wood, right? Um, and it's more like the accent pieces. You have the back part, you know, the bezels are made out of like metal and, and you have these beautiful grains, um, and you source these woods, like you said, from either from a sports team, from the actual uh, playing floor or from whiskey barrels. Um, how is it, or how do you procure these items and, and what is the detail? Obviously it's, obviously it's a lot of detail and the watchmaking already, but now you're in implementing this wood piece into it. Um, is this manufactured at a high level? Is this more of a kind of um, of a woodsmith, I guess, you know? like Yeah, no, it's, it's an interesting process because when we st- – it's not like just a general mold with the watches. There's a lot of intricate uh, wood cutting that has to happen, um, let alone so- – you know, there's a lot of steps along the way, sourcing the – well, creating the marketing calendar, understanding what we really want to promote throughout the year. You know, starts starts there and finding these wood stories we know that will connect with our brand, and you know, then we got to find the wood. And there's been some conflict recently with some of the importing and the tariffs that have happened getting getting stuff into China. So really, we've, wow. been, we've been we've been uh, we've been able to you know be nimble and work around it, get the wood into China, and then once it's out the manufacturer, you know, six years ago they didn't have necessarily a lot of a lot of these techniques perfected. So, you know, we've had to actually secure our own equipment, our own employees out there, um, and just kind of perfect the craft. Um, and that's something we need to tell a better story of. We've been talking as a brand. We, we have to showcase how these watches are, are currently made. I think it's going to set us above and beyond a lot of the other brands that are playing in the space uh, and be able to control some of the price point, you know, as we, as we kind of qualify the techniques and people will really understand what's going into the watch that they're wearing on their wrist. And it's, it's not a simple mold or cut and paste. Uh, it takes, it takes a little longer, um, you know, start to finish, but it, at the end product kind of embodies what we're trying to achieve. No, it, it's a definitely a, a premium watch. You know, when you look at it, it's, it's beautiful. I've been, I've been showing my family and, and friends and they're like, wow, like, this is amazing. And then when I, when I seen your website that, you know, you did have, you know, with the, of uh, of Boston and New York, with the licensing deals, it was like that was even even more special. Like you said, um, I even did the actual quiz on the website myself. <laughs> and all uh, right. yeah. yeah, that's all our team at this point. We had an awesome team here. In yeah, Central. yeah, because you guys yeah. made it so interactive. It's amazing. It's even to take yeah. that quiz and say, hey, you know what? Let's narrow it down for you. <laughs> just, it's just that next step of, of quality. I feel, right. you yeah. know, and that's great. Um. So take me back into your military days. Like, what made you go into the military? Um, how long? How long were you there for? Yeah, great question. You know, it's, I always knew that going to school it just wasn't necessarily going to be my 
I was a decent student. I just didn't really have much interest. I like, I feel like I could do a lot more than just go sit in a classroom. And I wanted to get hands-on experience. And um, so I, jo- I joined the military, you know, and I, really just to serve. You know, I just felt like that was something that uh, would suit me from, you know, 18 to 22. I never knew if I would actually stay in my whole career, but I knew that while I was young, I wanted to serve. And, um, you know, I was hooked. You know, I really enjoyed it. Um, similar to Philly, I actually picked up fairly fast uh, in the military and just kind of worked this system and was able to work work hard and, and do the things that were needed to pick up. So, yeah, I really enjoyed the Marine Corps and I served with the 11th Mew um, with Philly and and uh, yeah, it was an amazing experience. So really happy that it's probably the best decision I ever made. You know, right. putting me on, on a nice path and opened my mind. Uh, and, you know, being able to see some of the countries we were in. You know, just you come back to the U.S. and you, you realize how blessed we really are here in the U.S. And uh, you know, all the other crazy stuff aside, you know, all the politics and the crazy shit that that got everyone on edge lately. Um, you know, as a as a population you know and the things that we have around us and the inspiration that we can pull from just the architecture and how you know how well set up we are as a country you know it's it we're leaps ahead and we have those advantages that are just a blessing you know you know so to kick it with you and talk about business and talk about your life is 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 a huge interesting path right and a lot of people don't understand as far as business and if they are trying to get into entrepreneurship it isn't for everyone either. It's okay to have a career too, right? Um, and I think entrepreneurship has lately, I'm not sure how you feel about it, has been kind of d- diluted. Everyone wants to be an entrepreneur. Everyone puts entrepreneur on their IG tag. <laughs> um, oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, because yeah. back in the 90s, I can't remember even hearing the word entrepreneur. I didn't even know what the hell entrepreneur was. <laughs> 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 you know, growing up, we're not told about being an entrepreneur. You know, I guess the old term was be a businessman. Right. 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 No doubt. Go work and for somebody and go work for somebody. Work yeah. Have a ladder. boss. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. The small business and the small unit leadership, you know, how far we can go, you know, nowadays. And I, I have two younger brothers. I keep telling them, like, hey, start your own stuff now and and you know, take the losses now and, and keep hustling. Because at the end of the day, you're never going to you're never going to have the freedom of, for working for somebody. You're always going to have that drag. And if you can just start building and, and experience, getting experience under your belt now, do it. Take the L's and, and learn from those things. And sure enough, like you're going to be a good entrepreneur, businessman. And it's attainable nowadays to market stuff online and create a social media presence and use influencers. Or everyone's so connected. You know, even into the 90s, it wasn't possible. You know, and people weren't turned on like they are now. And I hear about shit every single day, news, you know, updates and visibility is so that you know heightened over the last decade and you just got to keep running and wait till technology really kicks in i, I think we're we're still at the infancy of our technology and we got to that's what we're going to take off and we're talking about in 20 30 years where we're going to be and i'm trying to build myself fundamentally now as a businessman and sure enough i'm going to take advantage you know here in the next 10 15 years no you're absolutely right and i think um an assessment, I guess, to your brand and to the people you have working for your team. As soon as I started looking up original grain, I, I started getting ads ready <laughs> in my feeds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's amazing how that works, you know. And so I guess it touch, let's talk about a little bit about the future. You know, um, original grain is, is is a very solid product. It's it's, it's very original. Um, it's a beautiful product. Are you guys considering inserting into the tech side? It's interesting. So we tested some of the tech stuff. Um, we did a watch. It's embarrassing, but if anybody wants to check it out, it's our second Kickstarter. It was our crowdfunding campaign where we incorporated, you know, wood and steel, but it was right as the Apple Watch dropped. So at the okay. time, we were, we were kind of piggybacking and, and riding the coattails and the PR play of the Apple Watch. So we created a product called the Duo. And <laughs> It, it's not it's not our finest work i don't you know so feel free to check it out but it, <laughs> we incorporated some of the i i just don't i didn't see i don't i don't necessarily look at apple and technology and combining original grain and, and when i said that earlier i was really speaking as like a business into the future so right, from, right. From og mm-hmm. uh, but it's just it's weird i don't know we're talking about timeless materials and then incorporating some of the tech stuff um 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if the digital is our route for at least the next year or so. We have so much more to achieve, maybe different categories as like a, a standalone brand. Uh, so I think we're going to keep our own DNA in that aspect. We tried it. It didn't necessarily work that well. And it just fell off. You know, it was just like, if I'm looking at it as the brand owner, I'm just like, this, this didn't make sense. You know, I'm sure a lot of people were. And it didn't sell that well. I mean, we raised a ton of money on our crowdfunding campaign, but the, that specific product wasn't necessarily uh, purchased at the time. No, but so. I think you guys, I think you guys hit a, a great, a great niche though, because of the fact that because technology is forthcoming and, you know, and, and things are changing and people are still go back to being retro, right? Like the vinyl, people still have vinyl records, right? right. Tape, t- tapes are gone. Eight tracks are gone. You know, CDs are pretty much gone, but vinyl has still lasted, right? Oh, and yeah. I, and I, I think you're in that niche as well to where people are going to want to have a, a beautiful timepiece. And that's what you guys make. You guys right. make amazing timepieces. Um, and that's, 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 a, that's a great thing to continue doing that, going to 2030 and seeing how far we're going to get in technology with wearables and to have something that's really original, that's going click, click, click with gears. Um, you know what I'm saying? It's, totally. it, it, that's just mechanical. You can't, you can't replicate that with technology. No, you're totally right. It's interesting as, as you talk about waves and things that come and go, it's, you know, when you look, when you look at architecture, like a sick cocktail lounge, you're, you're seeing wood and steel and leathers. And so it, I think it's just a matter of time before that transfers to into fashion. You know, any luxury household incorporates a, it's a unique wood flooring and a wood bar. It's, it's becoming super pop, really popular. Uh, so it's just, it's just a matter of before that becomes wearable. And uh, we're doing a great job, you know, just as a standalone. At times, I felt like it was a double-edged sword of being too unique. Um, you know, is, is this too, you know, too new? Are people not ready for it? Um, you know, but we've been able to maintain growth and, and continue to create brand awareness, you know, to become the premier makers. And I think it's interesting, you know, brands that last, you know, there's a lot of value in that. And you'll see brands come and go within two. There's been a lot of people try to enter the space after us. And it was like one or two years, you could feel them picking momentum. And then they would just fall off. They'd become irrelevant. They didn't have enough new, new, new news. And so we're just trying to kind of stay ahead of the competition and create new collaborations. You know, our designs are always getting knocked off. And it's, uh, we'll just, we'll just keep running. I mean, we can't look back. And um, I don't know, I'm kind of going on a tangent. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's fine. It's fine. That's great. It that makes a lot of sense because, um, you know, with with your brand, and you know, other companies coming in, do you guys really pay attention to competition, or do you say, you know what, fuck it, we're gonna just worry about us and just do what we do well, and of course, some rips us off, we're we'll suing or whatever. But do you really care about your competition? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm I always got my ear to the streets. I'm always I'm always watching some some of these top tier brands. You know, the Chanolas of the world. You know. It's, that's really what this this space is about. This online marketing, digital media marketing. You know, a lot of them are following some of these big companies that have, you know, massive budgets, and just really understanding what's working for them, uh, and where they're placing some of their money and testing it. You know, so I'm always I do I do pay attention to a lot of the competition in the space, uh, just because they 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 bring an insane amount of insight on on where where the market's turning. You know, and, and we test a lot. We're all I mean, every month we're testing. New marketing avenue, new channels, new influencers, YouTube. I mean, it's it's just constant. It's just, it's it's all about finding that vein and the stream of um, if influence. You know, so you have to always test and see what people are doing. So, but as far as design, we nest, we stay in our own lane. You know, we got a few things that are coming out um, and stuff that we've released currently that have never been done before. We just released a woman's collection, which we were hesitant to do. Uh, because we're so, we're such a masculine brand, and right. the world, and, and the, even the, the employees, there's a lot of guys in here. We just started hiring <laughs> girls to kind of even this thing out and, and keep us on track. They're definitely more organized, and and they've been a great addition, <laughs> great addition to our team. I'll tell you, keep us not so rowdy, but <laughs> <laughs> so just respectable enough, right? Yeah, you'll have, you'll have to come check it out. Definitely, uh, but, but I don't know where I was going with that. Um, <laughs> Oh, our women's line. So they're they're reclaimed with wine barrels, and they're they're not just the barrels. Now we're staining the wood. You know, we're we're pouring wine on top of these these cut links and bezels. You know, the process the process and the things that we're going through are unheard of because we're willing to test and try it. You know, and 
old gloves and, and the things that we're testing. It's just people aren't doing that stuff and taking that time and effort and because they're chasing they're chasing these high sales figures. I'm sure and and us being you know a private company and you know small and nimble, we can do, we can do the things that we we think that is going to influence our brand as a whole and just as yeah, kind of our route. So we you and your brother speak, and you, know, you guys are a private company, which is fantastic. I think there's a lot of leverage there as well because, like you said, you can really do a lot more R&D and not play it safe if you want to. You can really go right. out there. Right. Now, as your company does grow, do you guys have, I guess, an idea of how much of a scale you want to get to? Or do you guys want to kind of stay like more of an exclusive, limited type of edition brand that just maybe char- charges a higher dollar, uh, price point? Yeah, it's, you know, it's a great question. You know, at the end of the day, everybody wants to grow. I think that we're, we're going to grow efficiently. Um, you know, at, at some point when we take on real, when the, the opportunity is right and the collections are there and the sell throughs are proven, you know, we will have to make that next leap in a big series raise. I think, in a, and at that point, we'll be maybe ten years old. Uh, you know, it won't be. I think we could do that, you know, if there's big distribution that's in front of us and retail distribution and international market share that we haven't necessarily tapped into on the grand scale. I think that we could and, and will do that, you know, but for the time being, we're, we got our head down and we're, and we're releasing really cool, unique products, you know, so the time will come. I think we just got to be patient, you know, and, and let that totally make sense before we go go that route. How hard is it for your distributors to really work with the materials that you guys want to come up with and design wise? Like how long is the process between, I guess, from conception of a design of a watch to end result? It'll go between six and eight months, you know, especially if we're going to incorporate a totally new silhouette to the, like a new watch, that's going to take the longest amount of time. Just we're going to do two to three renditions that take two months each for all the tooling to come in place and the molds to finish. Um, and then at, by the end, you're just finalizing colorways, hands, indices, you know, some of the minute, minute, mar- the colors of the minutes, these fine details, the logo placement, uh, just small details, but it will take between six and eight months, you know, uh, then we're, at this point we're at a, we're at a place where we're constantly have our suppliers testing materials, new bands, uh, even if we're sourcing it here, like we'll source stuff here. If it, even if it's not the big supply that we're, we're going to need in the end, but just so they can start understanding how to use the materials, uh, and then we'll find the actual source that we're going to use. But we have them in a constant, constant testing and R and D situation. That's been a great ad. Uh, so we recently hired. We had a great hire, and I think it's going to take our brand um, to the next level as far as design. Pr- previously, it was my brother and I. We had a, a designer that was in here, kind of part-time he wasn't necessarily taking our design to the next level and we ended up bringing in a full-time guy actually he worked at Movado uh, mm. for about six years um, so he brings the, just a wealth of knowledge um, structure and just organization how we how we set this up uh, so he's been great and I, and I I can't say it enough the people that we brought on onto our team has helped us grow insurmountably and uh, you know it's been hard at times to let let the leash go and say oh you know, work on our marketing calendar to our other guys. And actually a Marine Corps veteran, uh, Quentin Wilson, he's, he's a, does our, he's our marketing director. Uh, you know, it's hard to let go of some of the stuff, you know, some of the creative, but we have great people, man, in place. So they're able to present, you know, awesome opportunities for us, things that they're seeing. And, and we work really well together. Uh, we've kind of set our brand up in a good way. What were some of the bump, bumps in the road that you guys have seen in the beginning? That that one may have caused you to pause, and two said, "No, fuck this. We're gonna keep on going." <laughs> We've had so many crazy <laughs> situations when we thought it was over. You know, the first two years, three years, actually every year, it's like, is this thing still rolling? Or no, it's it's always a challenge. Um, you know, one of the biggest things we did was understanding the sales cycle. Uh, understanding how much to spend, when to spend it, you know, and going hard and understand Father's Day is going to be great for us. Valentine's is going to be great. And not not just burning cash, um, you know, early March and early April and into, into June. Like, don't burn cash. Don't get sales just to drive revenue, top line revenue. At one point we were trying to, because we were selling watches, but, you know, we really understand 
um, just all the costs that are going into everything and the employees, the manufacturing, the shipping, the cost, you know, marketing online, really dialing it all in to understanding how much we can spend during certain certain cycles and being comfortable with it. Uh, forecast, you know, the forecasting that we're doing currently has totally put us in a great position to to carry the right amount of inventory and not being overstocked. You know, at one point we had so much inventory on a shelf. We're looking at a few million dollars in inventory, and wow. we were like, we are going too fast. So we need to slow down the ca- just the cash cycles. You know, and once you start getting into retail, you know, we're talking about thirty to sixty days. You know, we're, we're we fronted inventory, you know, but we haven't gotten cash. And it, it, there's just been so many things along the way, man. Just, uh, but understanding what it takes to become a healthy business, you know, um, it took time, you know, and my brother and I started this at a young age. I'm not, I'm not shy to say that, you know, 22 years old, I'm now 28, you know, I'm still fairly young, but I've, well, we've been able to just take this on face first to just, just make the right decisions, make good decisions, uh, risk it all at times, you know, but just just be true to ourselves and our gut and it's go go all in man no that's 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 honest as shit like you know like you said about the retail piece you know if you want to go into retail track in that shelf space you're not going to get paid right away <laughs> sometimes not at all man They're yeah crazy. retail is intense they have all the leverage and just they got all the, all the watches and all of a sudden they got shrinkage and you know, oh, this never showed up. And so we've had to just tighten it down and understand having real procedures in place and uh, for the right administrative people, you know, that, that can actually track all this stuff. And, you know, because they will they'll eat you alive if you're not prepared, you know. So we've had, to, we've had to just take, you know, take it as we can and understand the business, but always improve, you know. And I feel like this, that's what business is, constant evolution. And uh, we're, we've just been willing to take it on, not be afraid. So what, is a, what a portion, what, what portions are of you online compared to retail or is retail just there just to have a brick and mortar kind of solution? It's nice. You know, retail is great for branding. You know, and we, we love being able to say we're on Macy's and Nordstrom, Nordstrom's Rack. There, there's just crazy value in that when, you, when you're able to talk to people and share it and do PR pushes with the retailers. There's, so that, that's been the main focus for it to get it set up. You know, retail has only been a focus for about a year and a half of ours so we're prime we're still primarily all online and right. the digital so uh we're looking to scale it we're looking to scale it the international as well we we, we brought on a, a distributor in a few different countries that have started to see see success for us so uh we're, we're just growing that at a good pace you know and, and we're gonna let that even out when we look at the analytics between retail and online you see you see online chasing down retail fast and before it was like a 2080 split globally and now and now we're getting up to 30 percent online 40 percent and it's just it's almost becoming neck and neck which before it was never going to be like that so it's going to overpass it shortly online no it is um i had just came back from the mall from this morning um went to macy's and um i did see original grain in there <laughs> um uh-huh. And, um, but walking around the mall, half the mall was shut down. That's hard, man. You know, so yeah, the brick and mortars are just, they're getting killed right now, right? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what they're going to do, man. I've been reading so many articles and every, every article sounds like it's different. Like they just don't know. I'll talk to, I'll talk to some of the reps and you can tell it's pandemonium. They're trying to just, just squeeze funds and. Uh, yeah, it's concerning. So you just got to know who you're getting in bed with, man. We've actually partnered with the Naval Exchange, one of our best partners. You know, they have great sell through. They pay their bills. They they communicate. You know, they don't have a crazy amount of clients. You know, so the Naval right. Exchange, we're hoping to get in some of the A fees and on base um, and push our military connections and the collection we just released for the military uh, and just kind of, you know, just pick wisely it's like dating somebody man you gotta be careful who you do yeah, business with. absolutely yeah so, so i have this question for you so you know talking about materials and how unique the the pieces are do some of the materials because do, there's some of the materials i guess you guys have to like, like the yankee seeds obviously you can only make but so many as far as quantity Right. How, how do you keep up with the materials to keep, I guess, a particular silhouette, let's say, in stock, or let's say this is a forever silhouette you're going to have. Let's say this is a classic silhouette, and the material is going to continue being used. How, 
what's what's the issue or how can you continue procuring the same materials for that watch? Yeah, it's this great question. We've we've been able to designate multi different different kind of internal collections that we know are gonna be seasonal, they're gonna be limited. Uh, and then we'll have our exotic hardwoods like your rosewoods and your ebony's, um, your sepele wood. And the, is, there's an abundance. There's abundance of wood. Uh, so we'll have those. We know those are, are never out skews. And then we'll have, but we'll create sales spikes with the MLB, you know, as spring training and opening day and then into playoffs. We'll have a few different collections throughout the year. You know, it's, through Father's Day, we'll have a colorway with a certain wood. But we're talking limited runs, 300, 500 units to create marketing, create awareness, uh, run sales spikes. And then at the end of the day, a lot of people will be intrigued by, say, uh, a Yankee watch. But they don't want to spend 1800 bucks. but they're going to buy our whiskey barrel watch or our Brewmaster or Koa Wood so, yeah, at a more affordable rate. So that's kind of how we've designated the collections and the materials and when and where we release those at. So has your customer base really kind of dictates you guys the price point that they want? Or are you guys still testing out higher-end products as well or trying to get to a higher uh, price point? You know, we've seen in the watch industry, a lot of a lot of people, there's been a race to the bottom. And there's there's $120 watches. There's, you know, $100. we are we are trying to go upstream. and But we're going to do that and create value by using better movements, Swiss-made movements. And just go upstream from here at this point. That's that's where we see our brand identity is more premium jewelry and and eventually you know affordable luxury, and that's kind of that's kind of the route we've chose to take our brand. And it's it's difficult, but we're in this for the long haul, you know. And we don't we don't want to devalue the products that we make, and it's hard it's hard to cut costs on some of the stuff that we're we're sourcing the wood and, and hand cutting the wood and the finish. It just takes time and. We just don't see that as a as a good decision for our company. Would you guys consider that you know keeping this a private company for a lifetime, or do you guys ever think about hey, you know what, maybe we should have an IPO? I, you know, I think the time. You know, it's a, it's a great question. I, <laughs> I mean, at this point, we're in it. You know, we're in it to win it, and we're going to chase this thing down, and we're going to grow it and create such unique collections that no one's ever seen. To where someone eventually will put a price tag on it, and they're going to see the value, and they're going to see where they can take it too, you know. And you know, I want this this brand to be a globally known company, and you know, I think with the right partner, eventually, when we're when we're set up as an infrastructure, and we've worked out uh, how to make products in America, and and we've worked out some of these things that you know, partnering with every college in America, and there's a lot of things that we that we have to see through so that we can prove ourselves, you know, and just, I just don't necessarily think it's the right, it would be the right time, um, you know, to, to go that route. We just, there's too many loose ends that we, or we know that will create so much value for our company, you know, that we're right. really working hard, hard at. So until we like feel like we, what we've taken this thing as far as we can, uh, we're not going to be ready for it. You know, and we, we said, well, yeah, not ready. <laughs> have you guys ever come into a situation because you know you had like I said this premium product where people associate it, you guys making it in, in China as not being such premium because it's China some people have uh, that some people we, have that kind of perception we've had a few people say you know from time to time uh, you know you look at the stuff that are, that's made that you're probably wearing and sitting on and using on a daily it's it's primarily made from there, you know. It's right, exactly. <laughs> so that's, I mean, that's just people's opinion. I get it. We, we've actually crossed that bridge um, with one of the the colleges we're prepared to work with in the future, and they had said we're not going to let you endorse something that you know is made in China. We want you to make it in the U.S. You know, we we could have taken that two ways. We could have just said, oh, okay, you're not you're not a partner for us, or but we went the other way and said, okay, well, we're going to figure that out. Because if you value that, we can figure it out. So we've been working with multiple suppliers here in the U.S., creating custom custom collections. Uh, that hopefully, by the middle of next year, we're, we actually have a Made in America collection. You know, so so what does that do for your costs? It goes out. You know, it goes out. I mean, you know, three or four times. But if you use it at the at the right time with the right story and maybe the right partner, 
and the right movements and you've documented it well there's val- there's so much value there man that people want to share people want to wear that people will fork up for it because it, it i mean same same reason people buy nice designer shit it's just there's quality there and they didn't you know your your their stories are unique their watch should be unique and yeah no, I I get it. I, I I totally get it, and I think one to your point, everything I'm using right now, technology wise or whatever, even down to my dishes, is made in China. So it's <laughs> you know, I, I, and I think people tend to forget that, right? That they can't because they're a different country. Doesn't mean they they have less quality. Um, not to say you can't buy cheap shit. You can, <laughs> right? You get what you pay for. It's all about the source, you know. And there's shit right. thrown around on the internet right now. It's just the epidemic of people buying shit from crazy websites, right? Uh, you know, and then they get it, and they're you know they get it forty days later, and people are shipping stuff directly out of the manufacturer, stuff that's unbranded. So you just gotta, you know, the customers are getting smart though, and they know who they're buying from. They're looking at reviews. They're look, you know, especially on a purchase. Like I know if I'm spending two hundred fifty bucks. I mean, I make fairly good money, but still, for me to buy, spend 250 bucks, I'm going to shop. I'm going to look at brands. I'm going to look at, you know, it's just that type of customer that you're acquiring, you know, so. Absolutely. Different types of people. So when you guys first started, you know, um, did you guys get, you know, how, long, how long before you guys started paying yourselves a paycheck? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Uh, so <laughs> that takes me back, man. It's uh, when we first started, it was tough, you know, it was we launched on Kickstarter, but we didn't want to use the, you know, we raised a lot of money. We raised around $800,000 on kicks on two Kickstarter campaigns. Okay. So we had, we had money in the bank and it's just for new business guys. We were very, we we're very safe. You know, we grew up very humbly. So it was like, Oh, we had all this money. We didn't go the other route and just blow it. We were very nimble. And, you know, at one point I lived in the where our warehouse, you know, for three or four months without really t- making any money, you know, and, my brother did the same, you know, we, we lived together there for about three years and in, in Oceanside, right on, like near the beach was cool, but it was just right. a, a little shack, being shack, and, you know, it just took time and uh, we could have paid ourselves sooner, you know, and we've chose actually at times to bring in people uh, that make, that make more than us, you know, because they're talented and they're qualified, you know, and it, we're, we're in it for the long haul, you know, so we're comfortable, you know, with that and seeing people's value and what, how they can raise you know the equity of our company as a as a whole so right. uh yeah we've never been afraid or really greedy and crazy like that we've just we've got a vision you know we're willing to run the course and make the right moves and yeah so i don't know it's probably, it probably a couple of years before i started getting paid like like a real salary you know it's like yeah <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> fucking Crazy times, though, man. No, but I think that's that's a testament to your story. That's what makes your brand even more special. You know, when you talk about times like that and and the sacrifice you have to make, and it's it's fucking huge. You know, I think people kind of sometimes just don't understand what it takes, and they still want to live a certain lifestyle when they try to run a business, and they say, "No, you have to gonna you're gonna have to sacrifice." You may have to trade in that Beamer or that Benz. <laughs> totally, man. You got to <laughs> sacrifice, man, to grow business and. It's not just the hours, you know. Some, like I said, you gotta sacrifice the salary at times, and yeah, you gotta be willing to go the long haul. And don't be, you know, you can't think short term with business. You start thinking short term, you're gonna make the wrong moves. You know, it's just, it's not, it's not about that. You know, so. No, absolutely. I think, um, you know, how is it working with family, or even trying to start having a partner, <laughs> at, uh, as well. You no, know, it's interesting, man. People ask me that all the time. Like, how? Like, I hate my brother. Like, <laughs> like why? Like, I don't know. It's definitely a testament how we were raised. You know, it's just we we always work together. We have, uh, I don't know if I, I think I mentioned this on the phone call with you the other day. It was you know we ran businesses when we were four years or I was six years old. He was eight. Yeah. And we were picking berries and, and we were you know we didn't we didn't come up with like a lot of luxury like big trips with family. You know, my mom was a single mom for a long time. You know, so. We've just always learned to have each other's back. You know, that's kind of how we grew up. And I don't know. I, I I think we've learned to separate the two things too, from being brothers and being business partners. And I don't I don't really have a great answer. I've had a great experience. I tell you, when we see eye to eye on a lot of things, if we don't, we're able to talk each other off the ledge. Uh, you know, and you know, I think that's hard for business partners to find in general. So. I've just been very, we've been very fortunate in, in how it's worked out for us because there was some concerns from other people like, oh, what if, you know, I just, I just had to blank that stuff out. And 
it's always worked out well for us, you know. I don't know. That's awesome. Has has any of you guys had issue, you know, as you were growing? And you know, you you mentioned a few times already that you, know, you have a great team. You value your team, which is fantastic. You you've hired from some some folks that that have done great for you. You've added great value. Has it been hard for you guys to like let go of stuff yeah. since you guys have been kind of holding it close to your chest for so long? Totally. Just recently, my brother was. They were doing a marketing meeting and. He's like, wow, that was, he's like, it's so nice to see y'all just do this. And Ryan and I were, we had it in a different meeting about product, you know, and starting to get primarily focused on the product lane and less on the marketing and the day to day, you know, but it just took time, you know, and making sure the vision was set. And, but they're just, everyone we've hired, you know, we, we went from hiring entry level people to bringing in people to have experience with brands and corporations. And, and, you know, they have a, they have a guide and a go-to blueprint for how they're, how they're going to, make our business better you know and so we're, we got to trust that you know through the interview process we know we're bringing in qual- qualified people uh and we're going to listen to them in our meet in our meetings our monday meetings and our thursday wrap outs our friday creative sessions you know offer twists or advice but everyone's everyone has proven themselves that's in this building you know and it's great so what's your work-life balance right now? Like, you know, like family, work, how many hours you work a day, week? Yeah, it went, from, it went from that 9 to 9, you know, <laughs> 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. grind. Over, over the last year, we've been able to tone it back, you know, and I'm working 9 to 5 on OG. And then I'm our, even a little earlier, for, my brother's here, always the first guy here, so I always try to beat him. He's here like, <laughs> like I think he's sleeping. He's fucking, his life has <laughs> I'm starting to, you know, really try to balance myself to where, and it sounds bad, like, you think my, my new required hours I'd maybe put into a family, uh, but I'm really just trying to learn more stuff, other business models, uh, just starting to take time at the end of the days to, like, just educate myself on other businesses, and that's kind of where, I, where I'm starting to take some of those extra hours, so I'm still <laughs> working the shit, though. I'm still hustling, still working on the week, still, like, trying to meet people on the weekend. Uh, and I think that's going to stick with me, you know, until I'm really ready to have a fan. I don't have any family right now. I'm, right. I'm not married. So, uh, I'm able to just kind of keep on, keep my head down and stay out of the, stay away from all the roughness, you know, right and, now. And just grind the fuck out when that's it. <laughs> I got have fun, man. Meet people. Take, you know, I, I have some great mentors, you know, and people are, they're telling me how to, you know, really write things down. Like these, you know, three people that you want to make sure that you sit down and have coffee with this month, you know, and. Just right. making sure, make sure you do that because as we talked about, and the first thing we talked about was the power of your network, you know, and and just meeting bosses here in San Diego and leveraging, you know, what we've been able to create and just and just broaden broaden the awareness, but talking with other people that have went a different route and learned from them. So that's kind of what I've been focusing on. And that's that's huge. That's fucking huge. Like I'm 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 trying to do the same with this podcast, where. I'm trying to find interesting people to talk to where I can learn from, where other people can learn from. And I'm trying to make this platform to where I'm speaking to the, to the everyday person that's either trying to be an entrepreneur or that's there like yourselves already, or I have underground hip hop artists coming on. You can always find that top tier dog with the book already. Right. 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 But you, you, people want to hear, the true story and someone's true voice like hey right. this was six years ago that's not a long time ago <laughs> right. you know you can listen to all of warren buffett's stories and stuff it's great but he's like 100 years old already and that's fantastic <laughs> don't get me wrong but people i think i think there's a there's an innate interest for people to hear someone's fight or endeavor midstream that makes sense you know what i'm saying oh yeah no i I love that man midstream bro because we don't know what tomorrow's gonna happen we don't know in a year from now how how everything's gonna have panned out with some of the stuff i've talked about today you know so those are just stuff that we're we're eyeballing you know and and trying to get accomplished so you're right about that it's midstream for sure no yeah because i can see you guys like you know when the olympics come around you know Uh, like oh my god to just because of, I said your silhouettes are freaking beautiful. Like my favorite one, like I said, is the whiskey. The whiskey is beautiful. Um, I, I'm looking at I'm looking at your website right now. I'm, che- I'm uh, cheating yeah. a little bit. Um, <laughs> you got some best sellers on there. For sure. The whiskey's our best seller by far. Yeah, great seller. And my other favorite is the Aviator. Oh yeah. my goodness. 
Oh, yeah, that one has been really cool with the black on black. Yeah, black, man. On, black on black watch. Yeah, that's nice. just that's like some 007 shit right there. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just fucking badass. Like, and like I said, you 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 see that the, it's and I keep calling it a timepiece because that's what it is, man. Right. Amen. I'm trying to say, you know, it's it's a timepiece. If you want quality, and then the thickness, everything seems like it's so like. Like you guys really took the attention to detail to the next level. Oh yeah, we have the saying: "It's it's not a timepiece; it's a piece of time." Yeah. Oh man, I love that. That's it's it. a piece that's of literally. time. Yeah, that's that's I love that fuck. I love that. That that shit's badass. I love that. Now, who came up with the name? <laughs> it sounds so simple. Like, yeah, but it's, right. it's fucking genius at the same time. Like I just love it. It's great. So we, my brother and I, that summer, we came back. We didn't even have samples. Uh, after the deployment and a few months had passed, it was that August. We were back in Oregon. We were at we we're camping like Cottage Grove Lake or something, and we we're out. We were literally drinking beer on inner tubes, just talking about it. And I was like, "Dude, we got to in- include something with grain, you know? Wood, you know, it's wood grain. I always like grain something. Grain, this grain, and then classical grain was an idea. And we're like, no, that's too cheesy." You know, and eventually we came to original grain. And it was OG, and we just loved the idea of having OG. OG, yeah. They recognize as our brand. OG watches. You see a lot of our fans say that. You know, and, yeah. you know it was kind of what the hook for us. And uh, original is the first of its kind. You know, and that's what we were trying to become is you know the original wood grain. And you know, and at the end of the day, grain is what well, we did actually love. As we looked more into the grain, it was, grain isn't necessarily just wood, and grain can be. It's oh, just a type of material, you know, so right. you keep this, you know, and you're going to see this from us maybe in the future is other material stories um, that we can continue to tell. And it doesn't have to be wood grain, you know, and right. people will be surprised with some of the things we got got planned. No, that's badass. And I, I got to say, you and your brother are fucking very ballsy to get into the watch business, though. Yeah, there's some monsters in here. <laughs> right place and right time, man. I'm telling you, we six years ago there was just monsters in the industry, uh, and then as we started getting going, you saw some of these fashion lifestyle brands, the Daniel Wellington, the Movement Watches, you know, people that were fairly young founders, um, but knew how to become influential on the in the space, uh, and so we we've, we've seen some of these these other online companies just take off. It was just the right time, right place for, for watches specifically. There was, there was about a thousand of them that showed up the next morning, but there's been a lot of them who have faded out, faded out over the last two years. There was a, there was a run there where it was like, there's so many watches in the space. Like right. how do you even, you know, we, we always were like, well, we're different. We're wood and we, we have cool stories. And but there were so much minimalist watches that were just showing up with a stamp on it. And I was just like, I felt like it was killing the industry there for about a year and a half or two years. Uh, but those companies have totally died out. And, yeah, we're, the the strong have survived. And uh, we're just going to keep it rolling, yeah. Yeah, but I think, I think that's a testament because you guys decided to keep your integrity to your design, keep stuff in-house. You wasn't just, you wasn't just buying a, a generic silhouette and putting your name on it. No, for sure. And you know it took saying? time, man. I wish we had more silhouettes, you know, and that's something as we bring in the right people. And we're gonna have we have a ton of new silhouettes and new collections next year. It's gonna be insane how many how much we have planned to drop and it's along the lines of the fashion industry and seasonality, you know, and limitedness and we had a lot of great things that we've finally been able to yeah, get our infrastructure so, right. Yeah. So let me ask you this question, right? So you see how you have Supreme, right? Right. And they they're on this whole thing. And I grew up I grew up in Brooklyn, so I remember Supreme for being on one store type of thing back right. in the day. Um, and they're on this limited type of thing where while they sell out, they're done for until next season. Right. Or you see Nike with these limited editions that have now they have their, they call pop up shops. Out of nowhere, there's a Nike shop in a warehouse that's there for a couple months and it's gone. You can't even get these kicks anyplace else but there. Right. Do you see yourselves? following a trend of that nature or just saying, yeah. you know what? Hey. For sure. Okay. For sure. For sure. You know, seasonality and lifestyle and, uh, you know, that's definitely the route we're going to go. Uh, the pop-ups is something that's, that's become super popular. 
um, as brands have moved away from the retail space, uh, but to create like a controlled environment of branding and uh, events and skate skate sessions and cool shit that you know, right do, right you know, pop ups and they'll have artists and skate sessions and it's just like anybody. Oh my god, up, dude. I'm gonna have to fucking interrupt you because you're hitting all all the nails in the coffin right now because as I walked to the mall today, right? And I said this before to my son, my son, is, he's in college, goes to Georgia State University and he's into, you know, he's into fashion. He, he resells kicks and stuff like that. Right. And we were discussing how, and we were talking about retail earlier, how they didn't adjust. Like Payless, I see Payless sounds going out of business, Jim Barry, right. children's place. And they're going out of business because they just decided to open the doors with a folded, apparel on a fucking shelf and that's it and you're talking about a whole event like we went to a pop-up shop recently and the draw the drama that came with it just to find oh, yeah. it where to go oh, yeah. it was almost like a fucking scavenger hunt and then when you get there there's a line and there's all this this noise on social media about it and oh, yeah. and we for you to come out with a particular bag is that, yo, I fucking won. I did it. And no one else is going to get it. So were you, were you talking about right now? This guy fucking excited. Sorry for interrupting you. No, I love it, <laughs> I love it. That's exactly, that's the experience, man. That's people but, are right. for, you know? I can't that's what, buy a t-shirt. Yeah. I, do that I, can get anything, I can get anything online and get it in, in two fucking days. But I don't mind leaving my fucking house for something that's special. Yeah. yeah. That's going to give me a fucking memory. Because everyone's about memories right now, right? So... I, Facebook would give you some shit from 10 years ago. Like, oh, shit, I don't want that popping up, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> Facebook would do that. Um, you know, all, everything social media. Like, now I, Instagram is doing something now. That's like a memory from a year ago. You did this last year. And I'm like, holy shit. So me having something, like I said, I went to an event. Original Green was there, and it was last year. And it pops up on Instagram again. I'm going to post it again. I'm going to say, oh, shit. I forgot about this. Let me post it one more time. And then Original Green just got a fucking shout out. For sure, no, you know? for so much spike. There's spike of awareness there, and the, if if it wasn't in your neighborhood, the next one might be, and you're gonna make sure you didn't, you don't miss it, you know. And it's just, it's a longer tailed strategy, you know, that you keep on presenting yourself as, and yeah, people buy in. That's for sure. No, absolutely, and I think because, like I said, you guys are so unique. You guys remind me of the Ferrari of watches because, you know, Lamborghini, Ferrari, those top brands, they only make a certain amount, and right. the attention to detail is there. Right, even down to you know, you see, you get you guys get whiskey barrels. Even down to these um these spirits, they make special tea spirits, and they have limited quantities of a particular um spirit that they make. Right, so it's huge to get into that, into that space because I think when, when you try to play in that middle space, it's either you go low end or high end. There's no really middle ground in retail, and most people fail in that middle ground. Oh, I'm gonna be affordable. That's fine. I, that's, I totally get it. There's a space for that. But then there's also a space for, hey, this is this represents quality. This is a, a premium product. And people will pay m- fucking money for it. Yeah. Because people want to be different. Like, you know, I don't want to have the same shit someone has on them. You know, I want to be able to have something that's, hey, you know what? Yeah, I can go to Original Green because they have their, their silhouettes that I know I can get all the time. But I also know they have their, their, their pieces where... No one's else gonna have it. They only make five hundred of these, and I want to get it. Mm-hmm. You know, and I mean, you know, what I'm saying like, I think the exclusivity of things just makes people want it even more. Oh uh, yeah, no, you're right about that. <laughs> you know, it's 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 insane, especially like I said, what you said with just pieces of time. It's um, man, they're they're badass, bro. They really fucking are badass. I appreciate. It. I'm gonna have to send you a package, man. Make sure that you're repping. And- uh, yeah, I'll follow up. Make sure I get you a nice package. Oh, and I, I appreciate that. That's not even uh, needed, yeah. but it's it's insane, man. Like um, like I said, just because of the branding piece, the the website is on point, man. Like like I said, it, it drew me in. I I, I took the quiz. <laughs> take, <laughs> take, take, take the watch quiz. Like again, like it's interactive. It's, I'm just not scrolling to choose the men's section, and that's it. Right. You know, and all your tabs work. I hate when there's a website. <laughs> And there's and there's tabs, like you know, you have a men's uh, section, of a women's section, and when I go to that section, there's actually a product there. There's a lot. There's, there's a lot of companies where there's on a come up. They have a website. They have a tab, and it, it leads you to fucking nothingness. Four or five. <laughs> yeah. 
and it's full front there's a full strategy you know, you know it's like you're seeing that you even if you don't buy it but you're already you're, st- you're starting to see our ads i'm sure you know on facebook oh yeah oh dude yeah as soon as i i was doing research yeah I, my ig right now is filled with um ads from um original grain Right. But I'm like, oh, that's fantastic because I'm looking at you guys heavily as I did my research. <laughs> right. You know, um, it's 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 a great, great piece that you guys make. I, I love the uh, the general, the military one. Mm-hmm. That's, what, that's really oh, yeah. cool with the camo, the 44 millimeter. Um, that one's really, really cool. Have you guys – so I guess let me ask you this, right? Since you said you are trying to get into the military piece, um. Are you trying to make something that's really particular just for military personnel where it's actually more of a functional item for them to wear in the field? That's a conversation we just had, actually. I think we're going to we're gonna probably move into that route as we release more collections, and that will be something that we include. It's kind of that durability factor and performance-based. We haven't necessarily went that route, uh, but that is something we're trying to do. With that military, that this initial mi- military collection is really just the wood story, and old right. ammunition, ammunition crates, and then the, they receive a free free leather band that's reclaimed for military surplus, bomber old bomber jackets, um, camis, and old, actually the old tent canvas you know that people sleep under, and so uh, that was that was a, a good step in the right direction for us to, into using different type of leather materials, right. um, and, and I think that's going to force that is forcing us to actually continue down that route of using different types of leather and that we can probably tap into. Dude, if you could fucking get a few Humvees and make a couple of silhouettes out of a Humvee. Oh, sure, of course. <laughs> yeah, I just got I just got some really unique wood. Uh, I can't say exactly where. I can't sure. give it away yet. But we just got some really historic wood sent uh, for that our next round of military we're going to drop. So... We're going to continue down that route. I think we should do that. I think you bring up a great point. The durability aspect and performance-based watch, I think that's something people would like from us, you know? No, because think about it. If I'm, if I'm a construction worker, right, um, I'm not going to put my Apple Watch on. I'm sorry. It's glass. It's going to break, right? So it, it, it's going to serve a purpose. Um, if you are – like my father was is a former Army. He's, he was a vet. He passed away a few years ago, about six years ago now, actually. And um, he was always about – his watch, you know, he wore it a certain way. He always wore it inside, like the inside of his his wrist, you know, kind of backwards compared to everybody else. That's a military man right there. Yeah. People in the military do that shit. Exactly. So he would wear it like that. And, you know, he has me wearing it because of that, because of growing up, I saw saw him wear his watches. And he had to make sure his watch was durable. When he he went away, you know, he was in Desert uh, Desert Storm back in the day, and um, he, uh, he had to make sure his gear. We had to send him gear as well, right? So, as as families sending sending troops gear, you want to get the best you know equipment possible, right? Um, and if you can follow up with actually having not just durability, but a good looking piece too, well, why not, right? Because you know you, you you're stuck somewhere for a little while. You kind of want something that's going to bring you back home a little bit, kind of take you out of that mindset. Yeah. No, you're right about that. You know, so if if, the, if there's a way to to employ functionality and design, and sometimes it's hard, right? Sometimes you know when you, when you go and trying to go functional, that kind of takes over from design. Yeah. But if you can employ both of those together, it doesn't have to be a fifty fifty split, right? It could be a sixty forty split, seventy thirty split. But it can be something that's that's truly just from the heart, like you guys have already with your silhou- beautiful silhouettes, and then make something super fucking durable, and it's and it's strictly for military use. Man, yeah. people would love that. Even for hunters, yeah. hunters would use it as well, right? People yeah, love well, hunters. You got my mind. You got my mind twirling right now with ideas. I think you bring up some great points, you know. And there's yeah. huge, there's a huge consumer base, you know, there in general that every day, you know. And if, not if many people think, cater to them, man. There's only a few companies. No, that dude. To them and doing it well. You know? And think about this, right? Un- Nike's been around for a long time. Under Armour came out, and what did they do? They right went right into the hunting space. And if you go to a Dick's Sporting Goods, you'll see a bunch of Under Armour hoodies that has camouflage. Right. You'll see their their heat warmer gear that they have, you know, for for outdoor stuff. And Nike doesn't do that. Nike stays more in the athletic space. So I thought I thought that was a great great um marketing piece and, and whoever thought about that from under armor genius to go in that space because a lot of people again 
tend to forget that there's other areas of business and people do need gear. And if you look at your, you know, I see you have these beautiful pieces. Um, they're premium and it's great so far if I'm going out to dinner with the wife or getting as a gift of Father's Day, like you said, or giving, giving it to my wife as well. But now if I'm actually someone who's active, if I'm a hiker, if I'm going to hiking or if I say I'm rock climbing and I love to climb these mountains, like, I want something that's durable. I want something that's beautiful. Like I want something that's all in all. So I get, dude, think about if you got a rock climber, you start using guys, start using fucking rocks in your watches. It might be a little heavy. But, uh... <laughs> yeah, some, some old, st- you know, some old stones or you know, stone that's found, and I know we can get really creative with that kind of stuff. No, I, I, absolutely, you know, and that's what I'm saying, and that's what, the stuff that I like about your company, because, like I said, you're not just stamping OG on some generic bullshit. Right. True. That. <laughs> No, because anybody could fucking do that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That's saying about it. You guys are really going above and beyond to make these pieces. And you can just see the fucking quality. Like I said, everyone I've been putting on to this, they'll be like, oh my God, like, where have they been all my life? <laughs> like, they're right here. <laughs> they're right here right now. You know? Appreciate it. Yeah. No, it's definitely dope as shit. Like, so. As as you guys continue to grow, like you know, you guys said, you know, you're always open to either going to an IPO or staying, you know, as a as a private company. Um, and as you continue to grow, like, are you careful every year as you look at your analytics and you say, hey, okay, we are going to grow. We have to hire this person. You know, of course, you you build up your team and you're more strategic that way. Like you said, you were started out with entry level folks, and now you got to, you know pay a little bit higher dollar amount to get those folks with the experience and it's, and it's proving that it's working for you guys. How do you, how do you keep that, that vigor into your team? What are you guys are doing to make sure the team doesn't get bored? Yeah. I mean, the, the product controls that, you know, we, we had a moment there here last year where we had a few collections that they were hoping to drop in Q4. We're only able to release one of those collections. Um, you know, so, we everyone stays everyone at this office is motivated by the creation of new product and it gets the wheels turning and because there's a new there's a new story there's new influence there's there's new media channels that we can we can tap into with each collection um and that's something we're, we we set out to do as we introduce new collections and everyone here has no problem waking up every day and and kind of getting their getting their hands dirty and chopping some wood so no yeah cuz if you look at the, you guys have the Brewmaster box, right. right? And you guys have, you know, the detail. You have that, um, the the metal, uh, okay. right, the old yeah, cup. yeah. On there, you have the metal cup. You have the the, the, the old can opener. It's like a velvet yeah. kind of lower, uh, 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 lay lay in that's in there. Even down to the fucking hinges, dude. The hinges look badass. Uh, <laughs> um. It's a full box set, you know. It's a full yeah. gift set, and uh, it's obviously great for for gifting seasons. And but it has a whole kind of lifestyle, a whole vibe around the wa- around the collection and the box, the gift set, and whether it's a flask with a whiskey barrel and some. Yes. We've done whiskey. We've done whiskey glasses and whiskey rocks, along with our Jim Beam collaboration, and and just yeah, we try to make it very unique each each gift set. The closest thing I could describe it to folks, since it's not visual, of course, is the podcast. The 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 brewmaster box looks like almost like a like a cigar box, right? Yeah, right. yeah. Um, and then so when you open it, it has a picture of of whiskey barrels, like ingrained into the inner part yeah. of the of the of the wood of the box, yeah. Yeah. which is which is badass. Um. Just to stay, just to give people an idea of the level of quality, because I want people to understand, like you know, you guys are entrepreneurs. You guys are, are, did this from from really on your own from bootstraps, of course, you know, doing a startup. But you guys decided, hey, we're not just gonna do this shit this way. We're gonna fucking level up, and right. if we're if we're gonna put our watch into something, that has to be just as badass as the fucking watch. Oh yeah, little t- they're just all little capsules of time, you know. And absolutely, that's how we look at it, and how can we create that value and. We want we want the watches to be conversational, and everyone that wears one should should be able to talk about where it's from and strike up a conversation about their watch, and that's kind of what we set out to do when we design it. Yeah, I can see this right here, dude. Like uh, some of the Brewmaster box, like let's say I was a rock climber, a fucking carabiner being there for me, <laughs> you know, like some some useful shit with oh, with yeah. an active you know active series. I think you guys would be man, you guys would be untouch- untouchable, man. Like. Just the, the quality is there. 
and I, and I love that being an American company that you really guys are really showing off the quality of product that we're making, you know, and, and if you guys decide to have that where you guys are making a certain number of watches here, that's great. But let's be realistic as well. Business is done overseas for a reason. Mm-hmm. You know, as much as everybody wants to bring business back in, you know, into the States, it's, it's difficult. And it's not as easy as people think it is. You know, um, you have benefit packages that, that, go skyrocketing, right? You have, of course, minimum wages, depending where you're at in the States, that people are going, uh, most states are going up to $15 an hour. That plays, um, plays into it as well. You know, so I think people have to realize, as much as we want things made in America, which it can be done, I think it's impossible, but it won't be done as much as, as they think it can. For sure, you know. And some people would shy away, you know, and, I think as as you start a business, it would be really hard to get your company off the ground. I mean, if you don't have a ton of cash flow. But now that we're now that we're established and we have a base, I think that as I said before, I think that we can potentially play in that space and be one of the very few watch companies that are even doing it in the U.S. You know, and I know the majority of our stuff isn't, uh, but we're gonna we're gonna keep put. You know, because they're you know like you say, and everyone is shying away from doing that. Uh, so we, we're it, gonna give it's, it a it's not easy. No, it's, it's not easy. I know. I applaud you guys to even have it on the table. Yeah. You know, for you guys to even have that on the table and trying to figure out how, like you said, you know, you spoke to that one one university. And they were like, "Well, we want something here." You guys, well, yeah. you didn't say no. You said, "Let's let's figure this out." Right. You know, maybe it is a limited uh, thing that we do, yeah. but let's figure it out and see what can we do. Totally. You know, um, that that's just a testament to you guys' work ethic, to your vision, uh, for your business. And and the and also your audience, you know, yeah. you don't have customers. You guys with the with the pieces of time you guys are making, you have an audience, dude. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. Appreciate it, man. No, it's, hard work. no, I'm sure it is. Like you said, you know, you 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 guys busting your hump. You have a team. Uh, like I said, I can tell it's a bunch of talented folks. Um, is it is it really is it hard? I guess to. Every design doesn't make it. All right. When when do you guys know that? Hey, let's let's just put this one down. This is this we going the wrong <laughs> direction. <laughs> we've had stuff phase out, man. Just even stuff that used to sell really well, you know. We've had stuff phase out throughout the years. We just we we know our analytics. We look we looking at the sales data year over year, month over month, and certain SKUs will take off and and drop out, and uh, we'll introduce new stuff, and so. There's a, at some point you got to start eliminating certain colorways and options. We've had collections that have flopped. Um, we tried to do a unisex line uh, probably our third year, didn't really do that well. So we end up can we just can the whole thing, and we'll, we might bring it back and just kind of a different with a different kind of twist to it. Um, but yeah, you just you just gotta know know your shit and look at the analytics, and understand what's selling, what's not, and seasonality, and maybe that can play effect. And when you when you release stuff and. You know, we're at a place where we're gonna just release stuff during the spring that makes sense for that, and and summer as well. And yeah, just, just how hard is it to re- to not to, to repeat yourself oh. for silhouettes and stuff? Uh, we haven't had that problem, man. We 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 yeah we again we we up to two of the first five years we were just creating cool collections that made sense to us and and you know in, including unique design characteristics that kind of told a different story um you know as we brought on this new designer you know i i really don't see him finding any problem with you know if i was able to do it as a non-designer you know my brother and i to bring in a professional that's gonna totally take he's not gonna have any any concerns i don't think <laughs> right I hope not. Hey, that's, that's that's part of business right there, right? No, you can't no, he's, he's a stud. He's been he's been doing his thing, or he's only been here for a month, and he's just been cranking stuff out. Uh, so we got a lot of good stuff in the way. So, how big is your facility, your office? You see, guys in San Diego, right? Yeah, we're we're downtown San Diego. We're probably two blocks from Petco Park, uh, Padre Stadium. Uh, we have two pretty fairly big suites. Uh, there's Two big office spaces. It's actually in this old, broom, it's old broom manufacturer. Um, so there's like a bunch of old shit on the walls and machines that you'd never seen. They used to make brooms in here back in the oh, like the 30s or something. So oh wow, it, it was, yeah, super high 
you know, 40 foot ceiling. So it's kind of a warehouse vibe, but we have two spaces. Um, and yeah, it's right here in downtown. So it's, it's a beautiful area we work in and everyone's stoked to have it. So what kind of team builder stuff do you do for your team to keep them going, man? We're always doing stuff, man. We're, we're going to do a shooting range day, uh, actually next Friday, I believe. Love uh, it. We're always celebrating birthdays. We're all, we we got a keg in the house. We got a we got whiskey on deck always from Jim Beam. Uh, <laughs> these creative sessions, you know, we we make them fun, you know. So we're we're always celebrating each other, and we have a few people in our office that are that are their own influencers, and they ha- they have their own kind of additional hustles, you know. So everyone in here is 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 focused, and so we celebrate each other and and take each other out and it's a good chemistry man it's a brotherhood here you know that's what we've created and you know a real family vibe and everyone's just really supportive of each other and yeah we're all kind of best friends that's awesome that that makes that makes people want to get up in the morning and uh, and and do something contribute i think that's what it is too i think because what you have you you have people contributing to something so not just clocking in sitting in a fucking cubicle and waiting for the time to pass by (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I like that word, the con- contribution. That's for sure. That's what yeah. they do. Yeah. Yeah, they, they're contributing definitely to a, to an idea, to a, to a passion, to a purpose, to a dream that you, you and your brother formulated. And for you to develop this now family of original right. grain, that's an amazing feat, bro. Not too many people the- get to do that to her. Some of the hires we brought into, it's, and I haven't worked in the big on the big corporate side and with massive, you know, companies and 100 100 person teams but it's just like we could not you know why do you want to leave there why do you want to leave movado why do you want to come to original grain it's like i want to make a difference you know i want my voice to be heard i think that's that's this this day and age entrepreneur you know shift mindset and they want they want to make impacts you know so for them to sit in the office and clocked in for the people that are really hustling and that can make a difference they're not afraid to come to a small team uh, you know, that some may take, or you're going to move all the way from New York to San Diego, beach town, uh, you know, to, to a small, obviously way smaller company than Movado. Uh, but they, they see with the direction and they see how they can impact and, you know, in, in make, make positive changes to our company with their talent. So you see that a lot in today's entrepreneur. No, actually, I've, I've done retail management for over 25 years and, um, it came to a time I, I got burnt out. And if I did get recruited to go to a different company, it was it was new for maybe a, a quarter or two. But this it was the same old same old. I was just selling different fucking product. But the, the culture, yeah, but yeah, yeah but the with the culture was the fucking same. It was just kind of just this SOP culture. You know, everyone has to fit into this mold. And if you don't, you're kind of awkward. Right. And, you know and. To that point you just made, you know, why would you want to leave a, a company like Movado? Well, it's like, you know what? Because it's the same old shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nothing's really, you know, nothing's new really is happening. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, a lot of politics, you know. And yeah, it really is. So, weeds, yeah, no way. With that being said, like, how, how, are, how are you and your brother going to ensure that that doesn't happen to you guys? Yeah, I mean, I think we just continue, continue our, our the pace that we're at, you know, and give everyone an opportunity to, to be heard and do their job, you know, and step away as needed and come in and just manage and learn every day. I, I don't know if there's a direct answer to that, but just just yeah, give everybody their what they're here to do. Let them do it, you know. But, yeah. Cause, no, no, there isn't really a direct answer to it, but it's going to be difficult because the more people you hire, it means there can be more people in between you and your brother, of course, between yeah. other people. Because cool. it's, that's, that's part of growth, right? That's just a norm, that's just normal business. Right. And to keep that culture going, you're going to definitely have to find people that's really like minded, like you guys, mm-hmm. to keep that that culture going that you guys are building oh, you're together. Right about that. You're right. A bad egg can spoil some stuff, you know. So absolutely, man. Important. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, man. This has been a, a fantastic combo. Thank you so much, Andrew. Hey, right. same. Likewise, I always appreciate sharing our story, and hopefully, it can inspire a few people to get out and do their own thing, or just get, get hustling and yeah, come a long way. No, definitely. You really gave. You dropped a lot of fucking gems to that shit right now. You you just gave a, a entrepreneur class one on one right here right now like it's um 
and like I said, like from from you doing military to knowing that school wasn't for you. I think that's huge for a lot of folks. Um, you don't have to go to formal schooling to be an entrepreneur or to figure shit out or learn something that's totally, totally not taught. You can't, they don't teach watchmaking in the fucking universities. <laughs> There's no, fair, no there's, no, there's no certificate program you can get. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's kind of you got to dive in a deep end of the pool than when there's no water in it. <laughs> right? So, and you and your brother did that. I, I applaud you guys. You guys um, have a, a badass company. 